Hi, I'm Chef Paul Hayward. Today we're going to be making French macaroon. The first important rule about making the macaroon is to understand there's two types of macaroon. You have macaron, which is the French type, which is a soft, chewy almond cookie. And you have macaroon, which is a coconut macaroon, much softer, made from coconut, which is an American style cookie. So today we're making the French style almond macaroon. This recipe is very, very simple. We have almond flour, icing sugar, also known as powdered sugar. We also have egg whites. These are fresh egg whites. And we also have caster sugar. Caster sugar being the fine type of crystal sugar, not powdered sugar, but the fine type of caster, not granulated. If you have granulated, it will work, but I put it in the food processor to make it a little bit smaller first. The first thing we do in this recipe, which makes life a lot easier, we're using a food processor. The food processor, we are going to put the almond flour or ground almonds, also known as, into the bowl. Then we're gonna put the icing sugar inside. Equal amounts of icing sugar and almond flour is known as, in French, called tompeton. So with the icing sugar and the almond flour together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna process it on pulse to basically mix the two ingredients together and also make them aerated so they're nice and light and also make them nice and fine. Now, if this mix is very fine, you'll get a smooth macaroon. If you do not have this, you can push it through a sieve. It's very, very difficult. It takes a lot of time. So pulse in this for a few seconds saves you 30 minutes of trying to sift the almond flour. So all we're going to do now is we're gonna pulse in short bursts until all of this is mixed and it's nice and fine. Again, small bursts. If you mix for too long, it can actually come together into a paste. So now it's all nicely mixed and it's all nice and fine. Now this skips out the, sift, the section where we have to sift the ingredients. So this saves us a lot of time, also makes those almonds nice and fine. So you're gonna get a much smoother macaroon. That's why sometimes you'll have those little lumps on the top of the macaroon. Okay, now we're gonna go to the meringue. Now the meringue is also very confusing for a lot of people. We have Italian meringue, we have French meringue, we have all different kinds of meringues. So this one is a very simple, simple meringue. Fresh egg whites are very, very strong. They have good albumin and they were gonna to whip to it nice and stiff. So we're gonna pour that into the bowl. Now, we use different meringues for different recipes, but for this one, it makes it very, very simple. You cannot get easier than this. Then we're gonna add the sugar to the egg whites also. We're gonna add the whisk to the machine. The finer the prongs on the whisk, the better it's going to whip, the faster it's going to whip. But on average, this recipe works pretty much with any machine at any speed for this smaller recipes. Obviously, if you times the recipe much bigger, it's going to change. You'll have to get used to it by experience. But I recommend testing this recipe on the size we're giving you and perfecting it before you start moving into bigger size recipes. So we're gonna close the machine. We're gonna start with, with the slower speed just until the sugar and the egg whites is combined. And then we're going to whisk on full speed for seven minutes. So we're just starting on a slow speed just to combine the egg whites. Seven minutes are up. Now, if your egg whites are cold, it will probably take you an extra three minutes. The egg whites should be at room temperature when you whisk them. So seven minutes for room temperature, 10 minutes for cold egg whites. Now the meringue is ready. What we're going to do now is gonna add the color white still on the machine. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on slow speed. I'm using a pink food coloring today, and this is a gel-based color. The gel-based color is a very concentrated color, and it's fat-based. So it's important to add the color at the very end, otherwise your meringue will collapse. So do not add it at the beginning, add it at the end. So we're just gonna add the color to your desired color. My suggestion, if you're doing big recipes, you can weigh the food coloring, but we're gonna just count the drops. So I put four drops in, we're gonna let this mix and then see the color. Okay, so the color is added. 
You can either do this on the machine, it's much easier, or you can actually do it with a rubber spatula separately, and you can also add it that way. With the gel color, it's good because the color will stay even after baking. I'm just gonna finish mixing by hand just to make sure that all the color is combined. So now we're gonna take a plastic bowl. We're gonna add all of the almond flour and icing sugar mixture. Okay, we're gonna take half of the meringue. So you don't have to be exact with this. Now using the rubber spatula, we're gonna combine the almonds with the meringue. And we're gonna, basically what we're looking to make is a paste. And because we've processed the nuts, you're going to get much lighter and much easier to mix. So we're almost there now. So now we're going to fold in the rest of the meringue. And then we can continue mixing. Now the purpose of the meringue is this is what's going to make the almonds and the icing sugar uh, rise. But we don't want them to rise too much because if they rise too much, you're going to get cracks. We have to now combine the two together so we have just enough air inside the mix to make it rise just enough for a nice macaroon. This mixture now is known as the macanage in French. The consistency is good, not too watery. So now the next thing is to put this into the piping bag. And we're using a tip that's about one centimeter wide. Drop the tip or the nozzle inside the bag. And then we're gonna fill the bag with mix. Now we have the macaroon mat. Now this mat is highly recommended for beginners. Next trick, pan spray, which is a grease spray in a can. We're just gonna lightly spray this very, very lightly onto the mat. This will help the macaroons release from the silicone. So we're gonna just take the bag, hold it with your left hand at the top, your right hand at the bottom. And then what we're going to do is hold it about one centimeter and we're gonna squeeze with my right hand. So we're gonna place one centimeter, squeeze, stop, and take away. Squeeze, stop, take away. You wanna make sure you're piping straight down and evenly in the middle so the macaroon will spread into that perfect circle. Squeeze, stop, pull away. So this is the macaroons piped. Now, the other thing you can do, just take your hand underneath the tray tap like this, or some people just prefer on the table. This is just to help the macaroon spread out. Now the next step with the macaroon is we need to leave them to skin. They need to form a skin on the outside, so when you touch, your finger will not stick to it. This varies depending on your country, the temperature, the humidity in the room. Some places with high humidity, it takes a long, long time, up to an hour or two hours. Other places where you have a very dry heat, it can be ready in five minutes. So this is something you have to start with. I would start with 15 minutes and then touch. If your finger sticks, then carry on. The, the reason for this, this will create a shell. So when it cooks, the only place it can go is the macaroon could rise up. So this is gonna create a foot around the macaroon and this is gonna try and create you a nice, chewy, even sized macaroon. Okay, so it's been about 15 to 20 minutes. The macaroons has now formed the skin. And the way you test is just touch the top and you doesn't stick and you'll see a slight indent into the macaroon. It means it's perfect. You don't want to leave them too long to skin over because the macaroon will dry out and you'll end up with a dry macaroon. So the next step is to preheat the oven ready for the macaroons to go in. So now we're going to set the oven for the macaroons. We're going to click the set button, click the time button, go to 14 minutes, Temperature 140 degrees, fan speed low, which is number one. And we're basically ready to go. Once we hit start, the oven will start preheating. It has a smart preheating function, which will basically re preheat the oven to the exact temperature, including the walls of the oven and not just the air temperature like most companies. So we're just gonna hit start. Okay, the oven is calling, so ready for the macaroons. With the timer preset already um, and the temperature, 
The oven basically automatically cooks, so when it's ready, it will alert us, and then the door will open automatically. So now the macaroons are chilling down, we're going to make a nice filling for the macaroon. It's going to be a rose water ganache. Simple, simple ingredients. We have whipping cream, 35% fat. We have honey, which is a pure honey. We have rose water and we have white chocolate. Now the white chocolate needs to be have cocoa butter, real white chocolate. So check your label, make sure it has cocoa butter, not vegetable fat in there. So the first thing we're going to do is take the cream and pour it into the saucepan, followed with the honey and the rose water. Now we're going to bring that to a boil. The chocolate I've put into a tall cylinder shaped jug. Um, the reason why it's much easier to blend ganache or any kind of item that you're going to use a, a stick blender in this shape because it will emulsify. If we would have done the ganache in a bowl like this, the end would be very difficult to mix and you're not going to get a proper emulsion where it's all mixed and smooth. Okay, come into a boil. Just going to give it a stir because you have honey in the bottom of the pan. And we want to make sure when you see on the recipe that it says a rolling boil, it means that it's not one bubble. It's continuously boiling like this. Now we can see a continuous boil. So we know it's basically is boiling properly. Okay, so we're going to turn off the stove and pour it over the unmelted white chocolate. Now we're going to give it a little shake just to make sure all everything is covered. And what we're gonna do, the easy way is just to leave it for a few minutes for the heat to basically melt the chocolate on its own heat. But this way, when we go to blend, it'll make it very, very simple and very quick. So it's been a few minutes, the chocolate is now softened. So all we're gonna do is take the blender, put it inside, straight the way down and blend. And we wanna make sure that everything is mixed. So I'm going up and down, side to side, all the way around, making sure that everything is mixed. Now at this point, the ganache is ready. If you wish, we can add color. So we've got some pink gel color. We're just gonna add two drops. So the ganache is all blended and the color is added. So it's nice, a light pink, not too strong. We're gonna pour it into a dish or a bowl. We're going to then cover directly on the surface with cling film and push directly onto the top of the ganache. This is going to stop the ganache from forming a skin and we will leave this at room temperature, um, usually overnight around 26, 27 degrees. So it depends on your room temperature. Uh, until this will firm up and be a nice piping consistency for the macaroon. If you're in a hot place, you can also keep it in the chiller overnight. And then the next day, just warm it slightly in the microwave. So we baked the macaroons yesterday. They all come out great. The ganache is made. It's been set. Now it's all nice and firm. So the important thing we took the, from the silica mat, we took the macaroons off. We placed the nicest one for the tops. We placed the not so nicest ones for the bottom. Now, we, when we do this, we want to make sure that the top and the bottom is the same size. So when they, they sandwich together, they are nice and even and uniformed. With the ganache, my easy suggestion is hold it. Don't try and hold the bag at the end. This is a lot of pressure to put, especially if you're not used to it. Grab it lower down and you're going to squeeze from here. So you squeeze so nice and evenly. So when we fill the macaroons, you want to basically use your finger and your thumb. Hold the top and bottom of the macaroon. We're going to squeeze and stop. Don't worry about the point because the point is basically going to be covered once we put the top on it. So again, we're going to squeeze and stop and then we're going to repeat all the way along. Good thing also with the macaroon shell, you can freeze the macaroon shell and preserves absolutely perfectly. Or you can actually fill them and then freeze them. And the, also the shelf life is very, very good. When you're going to serve them, just make sure that you defrost if they're filled in the chiller and then basically go to room temperature. Otherwise you'll get condensation that'll become very, very wet. When we freeze the macaroon and defrost it, the macaroon will become very, very shiny. So a lot of people are a bit concerned that the macaroon's not shiny. 
That's because it, when it comes out of the oven first, it will have a flatter color and look to it. So the macaroons are all filled. Now the trick to filling, we place the top onto the bottom and then we take both sides and we twist. So we will put the top on the bottom and we will twist until the ganache comes to the edge of the macaroon. Another fun thing to do is to make multiple flavors of the macaroon. So you can have a different color on the top to a different color on the bottom. We can even put a hidden filling inside the ganache. For instance, we can put jam inside or chocolate chips or nuts or different things like this. Even just using things like store-bought items like peanut butter, and you can make yourself like a, almost like a Snickers. If you just push down, it's very, very difficult. But if you twist, it makes it very, very easy. Practice makes perfect. If you follow this recipe and the simple steps and using the Baker Look Shop Pro Master, you're gonna get perfect results every time. Even cooking, everything the same, same size, same color, amazing consistency. Put these into a, a nice little storage container, put them in a box. You can keep in the freezer for many, many weeks. So there we have beautiful macaroons baked in the, the Unox Baker Lux Shop Pro Master. Cooked perfectly, filled with their rose water ganache. Enjoy.